guys, here with me I have the Uniphone S8. It's a new budget smartphone and it's quite a standard design as you can see, similar to a lot of other smartphones. It's got this matte black along the back here and a solid metal feel to it because uh, the edges are along here, you can see there. It's got a 3000 milliamp hour battery so it should be lasting you the whole day on one charge and uh, personally I would really recommend getting an SD card for this because the storage that you get just internally is only 8 gigabytes but if you bring an SD card put it in there um, then it'll extend up to 128 gigabytes so if you like taking lots of photos or storing videos things like that that'll definitely come in handy. What sets this phone apart from a lot of other phones is the price. It's very, very inexpensive. At only $77, it's really a steal. And it's got a lot of the usual features that smartphones you normally find have. It's got Touch ID, Full HD display, which is 5.3 inches. It can also take two SIM cards or a SIM card plus a TF card to extend the storage. And generally runs pretty well. What makes it special is at this price, you also get these dual rear cameras here. Now, what I'm gonna do today is show you what sort of pictures it can take. For such a low price, what sort of pictures can we expect and what kind of quality can we get from that? So for this photo, I'm using the SLR function on the phone, which allows you to select a particular point of focus, in this case, the egg drone in the foreground, and then adjust the virtual aperture, giving a bokeh effect by putting the rest of the picture out of focus, which in this case is the phone box and the other egg drone in the background. Now here is a close-up of the same egg drone under the phone's normal photo mode with default camera settings. And here's my mug and a close-up of an old SLR camera I have lying around. For these next shots, I went outside. First, I took pictures of some flowers, and these two shots show you the different levels of brightness that can be achieved when uh, using different exposure settings on this camera. This shot of trees and buildings is also on the normal photo setting, whereas this shot of the same place is using the HDR function on this phone, which can give you a better balance of brightness and color in your photos. However, this setting is not good for shooting moving objects. Just as in this landscape shot, where I've also used the HDR setting, you can see some of the people walking have a blurred image behind them. So, uh, needless to say, I was pretty surprised by the quality of the photos, considering what a low price this phone has, just $77. If you'd like to go ahead and buy it, then head on over to geekbuying.com now. And don't forget to subscribe.